Before we talk about an alternative way to calculate costs of goods sold, let's do something easy. Let's figure out how much Sophia spent on the weekend. At the beginning of the weekend, Sophia had $10. On Saturday, Sophia was paid $90. At the end of the weekend, Sophia had only $20. So the question is, how much did Sophia spend during the weekend? So let's take this one step at a time. What was Sophia's beginning balance of cash? It was $10. How much was added to the beginning balance of $10? $90 were added when she got paid. So how much was available for her to spend? Obviously, $100. So if she had $100 available, and at the end of the weekend she had only $20, how much did she spend? Well, she must have spent $80. So how did we calculate that? We subtracted the ending balance, which was $20. So the amount Sophia spent is calculated as $100 available minus the ending balance of $20 means she must have spent $80. So notice something important about this formula. The beginning balance plus additions, which is $100 total, equals the amount available, also $100, which also equals the ending balance, $20, plus the amount spent, $80, which also totals $100. So the equation could also be written as beginning balance plus additions equals the amount available which also equals the ending balance plus the amount spent. But the version of this formula that we will be using the most is beginning balance plus additions equals the amount available. Then we subtract the ending balance, which gives us either the amount spent amount used, amount transferred out, or amount sold. In Sophia's case, the amount of money she spent, $80, is the amount used. On the next slide, we'll use the same numbers to calculate cost of goods sold. So here's the generic formula from the previous slide. We'll be using this generic formula a lot this quarter, so make sure you understand it. Let's calculate IKEA's cost of goods sold. We'll use our generic formula as a guide. At the beginning of the period, IKEA had inventory of $10. During the period, IKEA purchased $90 of inventory. And at the end of the period, IKEA only had $20 of inventory. So the question is, how much inventory did IKEA sell during the period? So let's use our generic formula as a guide. We start with the beginning balance, which was $10. Then we add additions, which in this case are the purchases. IKEA purchased $90 of inventory. So what is the amount available? We'd more specifically call it cost of goods available for sale. So $10 of beginning inventory plus $90 of inventory they purchased gives us $100 of goods available for sale. Then we subtract the ending balance of inventory, which was $20. So if IKEA had $100 of inventory available for sale and ended up with $20, how much did they sell? Well, the cost of goods that they sold must have been $80. So again, we'll use this generic formula a lot for this class, so make sure you understand it. We'll use it again, but this time with more realistic numbers. Now let's look back at that slide showing the merchandiser's income statement and balance sheet. The service company's income statement and balance sheet are shown on the left for comparison. 
Now notice the merchandiser's income statement shows cost of goods sold of $3,600. How might they have calculated that? Well, I'll show you on the next slide. So let's calculate IKEA's cost of goods sold. We'll use our generic formula as a guide. At the beginning of the period, the merchandiser had $2,000 of inventory. During the period, the merchandiser had purchases and freight in of $3,800. At the end of the period, the merchandiser had only $2,200 of inventory. So the question is, how much inventory did the company sell during the period? So pause the video and use our generic formula as your guide. First, we need our beginning balance, which was $2,000. Then we add our purchases. Remember, freight in is just the cost of shipping for the inventory. So we include that in the cost of the inventory. So purchases were $3,800. So how much was available for the merchandiser to sell? Well, the cost of goods available for sale is the 2000 plus the 3800 which gives us $5,800 of inventory sitting on the shelves ready to be sold. So if we had $5,800 available for sale and ended up with only $2,200, how do we calculate the merchandise sold? Well, we subtract the ending balance of $2,200 and that gives us Cost of goods sold of $3,600. Normally, external users will see the income statement with only one line for the cost of goods sold. They will only see sales revenue minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. They won't see how cost of goods sold was calculated. The calculation of cost of goods sold is typically an internal document for managers to take a look at. But since we are studying managerial accounting now, we'll include the cost of goods sold calculation. So let's import the calculation from the previous slide. And then we'll expand our income statement to show the calculation of cost of goods sold. So if you see an income statement showing how cost of goods sold was calculated, you now know that our generic formula was used to calculate it. In the next video, I'll use these income statements to show you how all costs are classified as either product costs or period costs.